What kind of shades are you rocking? Locals. By the way, do you pronounce it locals or locales? Because it is locals, but I feel like we're the only ones that call it locals. <laughs> we got an exciting update on some carbon. We actually uh, are building a full carbon fiber kit for this MR2 right in here. So we've already done the side skirts, which we'll show you in a little bit. Not right now. They don't get it all right. This, it's not that easy, okay? You gotta work for it. <laughs> Before one of you internet wizards comments about this coolant leak, <laughs> it was it was too far this way, so I moved it a little bit over. It was actually too tight, crimping it right after the nub. It crimped it, and then I believe it flared after that because of that that sharp turn in it. I believe it it opened it up, and that's why I was spraying. It's all good now. It's Gucci. Yeah. Intake filter mod. Don't you need that on first, the clamp? True. <laughs> <laughs> you noob. Fucking smart. <laughs> you force it, it's gonna happen. <laughs> Is that max, uh, max depth? Yes. <laughs> the turbo. <laughs> Gold tape, name of the game. Boots and cats and boots. <laughs> You're like crouched down too. <laughs> Yeah, you from the back. <laughs> you know, what the hell is this guy doing, man? So I have the heat I've never seen that coating, on that and now I'm gonna protect it again. This tape is apparently good up to like 900 degrees, so... <laughs> Same skull things as... Ah! It's hot as fuck. Perfect length. Look at all these dope stickers on my toolbox. So that was 15.6 PSI. Before it was only hitting around 13, and uh, as soon as it gets above 15, you can really hear that wastegate open up. We're gonna crank it up to 18, turn the offset up a little bit so it's gonna hit a little bit higher boost. Like I said, that was 15.6 PSI. We can't really rip it too much because we're kind of on private roads. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. dude. So that was 17.4, so we can even go a little bit higher. Hold. Okay, one more pull just to confirm. Devin got a. Bro, it's hacky. totally bit, man. That's the one he got, and this is the one he bit to see if it was the same as this one. And it totally is. Dude. 100%. Fuck, man. You got a half bitten. We eat both right now. Did you count them? They only I gave you 19? I just mean. I mean, if it's extra, then it's not a big deal, right? <laughs> 20 and a quarter. If it's, yeah, 20 and a quarter. <laughs> that's, that well? that's value, dude. What's going on, guys? A couple big announcements in regards to the 240 today. We picked up a new engine for the 240. This little KA right here has done 30 years of good service in this car but unfortunately it's time to go. This here is the engine that we picked up for $100. It's an SR20 DE, originally an NA block and setup. We will be boosting it. We've got everything here that we need to rebuild it. Set of pistons and rods, block, head, cams, literally everything. It will need some machine work. We're gonna be putting it back to factory spec. We would like to get this into the car as soon as possible, but seeing as we bought it, in this condition, it'd be a good idea to get all the machine work done and all the clearances checked to make sure that it lasts us a long time. We are also supposed to be getting the windshield taken out of the 240 today so we can uh, repair all of this rust, 
What's up guys? So I managed to pick up some pretty rare side skirts for the R32 sedan. I managed to pick up some pretty rare side skirts for the R32 sedan. These are M-Spec side skirts. They come on the GTST sedans and they're pretty rare to come by. I was told that they usually go for around a thousand dollars in New Zealand. So I managed to pick them up for a really good deal. Here they are mocked up on the car. However, they do have a couple damage points. So I already went along and did some carbon fiber repairs on the inside. Anyways, uh, David's gonna lend me some Bondo and I'm gonna be fixing up the skirts and painting them today and then hopefully installing them on the car. And Bradley's gonna come by with R33. Yeah, Bradley just finished a big build. Yeah. So we'll show you guys that later in the video. You always want to start out with a really light coat so the paint has something to stick to when you do your subsequent layers. Alright, so simultaneously I'm going to be test fitting my new wheels. I got some adapter space just in. Keep in mind this is 4 lug. The NKs that I'm going to be test fitting are 5 lug. So here's a before shot of the fitment. Damn. I'm going to be rolling the fenders tomorrow to fit these wheels. And here's the adapter spacers. So it's 4 lug to 5 lug conversion and you reuse one of the original lugs. I will not be installing these 100% today because you need to actually extend this lug. So I'm going to be getting ARP extended studs. It should be good and safe and proper, sort of. Also keep in mind these wheels are not refinished yet. Powder coach tipping really bad. You guys have definitely seen these before. They were on the Stagia and the Super actually. So I'm going to be sanding this down and repainting them before I put them on. I think I'm gonna go with a silver classic skyline on NTO3s. What? Just trying to state the facts that you forgot the camera. <laughs> Vante rolled up in the house. Product placement, Nelson Canadian. There we go. You Canadian, bro? Yeah. Yeah, we're just talking. This is how the S15's wheels looked before. Just to give you a judge of how much you have to pull. Yeah. Luckily, this thing has full adjustable arms, so. You're pretty wide, though, bro. Like, don't you think once you can, bro, you're gonna be like crazy close to the. <laughs> that's the point. Stance, bro. That's yeah, literally that's the, the point. point. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think your wheels are gonna be a bit close <laughs> to your fender? <laughs> the point is to not be functional. <laughs> exactly. Pretty much. Look good, but not functional. Oh, hell yeah. That's the nice thing about life. Oh, yo. Yes, <laughs> dude. That's badass. That's sick as fuck. Yeah, that, these are going to be easy to fit. Damn. Damn. Camber them a little bit? Yeah. This one's invisible. <laughs> this one's out to the moon. The wheel's kind of crooked. Hupty. Alright, so I kind of ran out of paint halfway through. Well, not really halfway through. I was like, I just finished my third coat, and I think it's enough to do clear. If I'm unhappy with it when I see it in the sun, maybe I'll like buy some more paint and do another coat, but I think it's gonna be okay. There's not too many like imperfections. Oh, I'm just kidding. Woo! Oh, damn! Oh, fucking time. oh, shit! Bradley's here. Damn, yo, it's been a long time since we've seen this thing driving. Chris's canard setup looking mint. Oh, shit! Wow. Good job, man. Yeah, you're gonna go ahead and pull stuff down and give her a little bit of a little bit. Running that link ECU, same as us. How 
many people remember this car? Comment below. Yeah, this is an OG car on the channel for sure. Skirts are almost done. They turned out decent, but if I had a little bit more paint, it would have been better. Unfortunately, one of them is a bit blotchy, but I think I'm gonna repaint them in the overwinter anyways. Give me something to do. So I got the first skirt on already. This side actually has two holes pre-drilled, so I already put screws in there. The two holes that were previously here were actually too far in and they weren't touching the body of the car. So I created two new ones and I used body clips for that clean OEM look. Dylan just pulled up. Quite the OG cruise we got going on today. Haven't had a lineup like this in a while. So a little bit of an update on what happened to my car and why the engine is not in it. About the time when we were driving in um, Vancouver, I noticed that my engine would like almost stall out whenever I would, I would have the clutch in. And I didn't really think anything of it. I thought maybe just my clutch was worn or something was out of whack. But anyways, we drove back to Calgary and I drove the car for about another week and then started noticing some low oil pressure with the car. So right away I parked it. I ended up pulling it, pulling it apart. Um, getting down to the bottom end and trying to figure out what actually was causing the low oil pressure. Initially I thought it could have been the oil pump. Once we got down there and opened it up, I noticed that the thrust bearing was actually completely worn down and the crankshaft uh, counterweights were spinning around and grinding against the block and the girdle. So, you know, I was a little puzzled because the engine was specced, everything was clearanced and measured. I did my best to make sure that the engine was put together properly and within spec, which it was. So I was a little puzzled and, you know, dumbfounded as to what happened. Over the past couple of weeks here, I kind of just been doing some research and essentially crank walk is what happened. So the crankshaft was pushed by the wear on the thrust bearing, the crankshaft was getting pushed forward. What did I do differently that uh, caused the crankshaft to destruct like that? Finally pinpointed it down to the clutch pedal. So. I had the clutch pedal off when I was building the engine. The way that I adjusted the pedal stock is I wanted something that was super responsive and I wanted very good clutch feedback because I didn't have any dead zone at the top and there was no pedal stop at the back. Every time I would push the clutch in or I would have the clutch in sitting at a light, um, I was putting too much load on my crankshaft and actually pushing the crank forward until finally the main thrust bearing wore out and that's where I was getting the little oil pressure. I'm kind of taking this setback as an opportunity to go over the car and go over the things that I feel there could be improvement on. You know, I've done rap for the past three years and honestly, it's just not cutting it for me anymore. There's always parts that are lifting or peeling or bubbling. Overall, I'm just not happy with wrap anymore. I'm gonna be peeling the wrap off, it's gonna be Sanding the whole car down, prepping it, trying to get this wide body to fit as seamless as possible. And I'm just gonna have fun with that. I'm gonna experiment. That's the whole thing with building these cars, is you do things to have fun. I definitely, definitely got my enjoyment out of the RB30. I've been driving the 240 for a bit. The 240 is a blast to drive in itself. Um, we have an SR20 for it now. It's a little side project, a little cheaper side project to work on in the meantime. The Skyline is gonna be an overwinter project once again. On to bigger and better things now with this thing. So this little SR20 is gonna be the new powertrain for the 240. Quickly got everything mocked up. The block, the head, the valve covers, intake manifold, and the turbo side. Before we go any further with this though, we do need to drop it off at a machine shop to get checked and measured. And then we'll put a new set of bearings in it, maybe do piston rings, and just an overall refresh on this thing. 
so this windshield is fucked. Been this way since we got it. So we're gonna get the glass pulled so that we can uh, go ahead and fix all this rust that's around the windshield. It's all rusted out, eh? Oh yeah. And we didn't even need you to pull this windshield for us. <laughs> It's not supposed to? Whoever put this in last did not know what they're doing. <laughs> they just put glue around. The, the molding's supposed to be here, not urethane. Yeah, it's yeah. urethane from the outside to hold it in. Jeez. <laughs> seen this in the movies before. <laughs> we got some work ahead of us. It's gonna be putting lipstick on a pig. <laughs> I started playing around with the 240 just a little bit. Uh, I took a flap disc to it just to fuck it up a little bit, get rid of some of the rust. We can't really be surprised with this. This is a 30 year old car, especially being an Alberta, Canada car. Salted roads, that kind of stuff. A lot of it is down to bare metal now. I applied this rust converter stuff to it. We'll see how well it works, but it already seems to be doing its job. The worst spot of it is this corner right here. There's literally a hole. We'll have to do something about this. Maybe just fill it with like kitty hair or fiberglass strands. We'll see. All right guys, it's another day. So far I've primered the wheels, got them prepped. I'm gonna lay the first coat of paint right now. Alright guys, it is day three on the Skyline project. This is going to be a bit of a longer video. I managed to paint the wheels yesterday. They look phenomenal and I actually just finished up doing one of the sides. So, damn! We are officially five lug gang. I need to get one more uh, lug nut for this because obviously I only have four on there right now. So now that I know how to do it, walk you guys through it on this side, four lug to five lug adapter spacers. So first step is to pull your caliper off and then just find a resting place for it so it's not pulling on the brake line. The next thing we're gonna have to do is bang out one of the studs because one of them will be extended, two of them will be cut, and the third one will fit into the relief on the back of the wheel. Pretty much just wanna gun it on until it's fully seated. With the five lug adapter on, this is gonna be the extended stud. These two that are close to the other studs are gonna be cut about three threads. Studs are cut. Now you wanna go through with a file and make sure that the edges are nice and rounded and you can still get a lug nut on. So just before you fully put this on, you wanna just confirm that when it's fully seated, the studs that you cut are actually shorter than the surface of the spacer. Okay, moment of truth, I'm about to set it down. Pretty sure it's gonna rub very bad. Let's see how it goes. Oh, damn. God, damn, all right, fronts are done. This thing is low. It's close, man. It fucking it rubs like crazy. Better. Yeah, Charles I'm burnt his hand, fingers. yo. <laughs> Oh, holy oh, shit. Fitment is actually hot. Damn. And it can kind of go full lock. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that is ridiculous. What the fuck? And it sort of drives too, so like I might raise the fronts a little bit. I'm gonna try driving like this and just see kinda, kinda how bad it is once it really settles too. And then rears will be done tomorrow once I get my drill bit in. Then 
this is a pretty cool shot. Alright guys, so unfortunately in the midst of some bluebird chaos, we actually lost the camera for about a day there, so I was not able to film the rears. I had to roll and pull them quite aggressively. Uh, the fenders actually ended up kinking a little bit around the door just because it's a bit thicker there. That's okay, I'm going to be building a carbon arch, sort of like a Nismo R34 arch for that over winter. However, the car looks amazing as is. Definitely way more aggressive. This is probably one of the most aggressive wheel fitments that I've ever done on one of my builds. Feels good to be back in the stance game for sure. Stance Jesse has made an appearance, definitely. So as you can see, this thing has come a long ways. Picked up some extended tuner style lug nuts. These things are on there, secure and looking good. I also managed to build these wing risers. I just kind of mocked them up. This is just a prototype. I'm gonna go over and redo them, possibly out of carbon fiber. We'll see. So let me know what you guys think about the NK NTO3s, as well as the wing risers and the new stance and the 32. Leave a comment down below. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the notification button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And be sure to come back for the next video. We got a lot of awesome content coming up. Saskatoon driven September 21st. We're going to be there. We're going to have the 240 and hopefully we're going to be drifting as well. Peace guys. Thanks for watching. Ooh.